Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Marvel Crisis Protocol character spotlight. And today we are taking a look at Akoye. Uh, she is one of the remaining two threats that we haven't covered yet, and personally, she's probably one of my favorites. I only recently picked up the model myself, so I haven't had as much of a chance to play around with her as some of the others on, on the list of twos. But I think she has a lot of really, really interesting things, and just personally, she kind of plays to my playstyle very, very well. So I'm excited to talk about her, and uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get right into breaking down her stats here. So, as already mentioned, she is a 2-threat. She's coming with 3-3-3 three, three, three defensively, which for a 2-threat is pretty solid, you know, standard kind of. She's got 4 stamina, she's going to be rolling in at size 2, and a medium move. On the flip side, none of these stats change at all, so we won't have to worry about that too, too much. She's coming in with three separate attacks here. She's got a basic strike. This is a physical attack. It's range two, four dice, and it is a builder, so she's only going to be getting power if she deals damage off of this, which is okay. I mean, she is only a two threat, so what are you expecting? But does mean her power generation can be a little bit inconsistent because her other attack here is a energy vibranium spear blast. This is also a free attack, but... It has absolutely no rules text, so no gaining power off of this one. Uh, it is range for four dice, though, so it does give you that little bit of versatility if you need to be attacking from a little bit further away. Nice to be able to do that, or if you just, you know, you're trying to actually deal damage to something and they're weaker on the energy side. So having that variety is certainly nice, uh, even if it doesn't give her any power or anything like that. She does have a spender, and it's actually a pretty solid spender, um, so it's going to be costing her 4 power, which is pretty expensive, and as we've already established, she kind of has a little bit of a problem building up that power, but uh, it's range 2, it's throwing 5 dice, so, so not hitting crazy hard, but she is only a 2 threat. It's got 2 triggers, both on wild, it's going to be piercing and flurrying, so pierce is obviously a great, great effect to have on five dice. It's reasonably good odds that, that you'll get it, but not something you can expect every time. Uh, and then the, the flurry lets her make a strike attack afterwards. So, I mean, you're already in range two of your target. Um, and then you get to throw an extra four dice builder at them and maybe gain back some of that power you just spent. So, yeah, that's a, that's a solid kind of almost killy profile for a two, but obviously not nearly as hard hitting as something like a rocket raccoon because that's not really Okoye's role. This is where we get into her superpowers, and she only has one reactive superpower, no active superpowers, and that reactive superpower is Bodyguard. It's going to cost her two power when another allied character within range two of this character is targeted by an attack. This character may use this superpower. This character becomes the target of the attack, regardless of range and line of sight. So two threat bodyguard um she she can she can do that and that's really nice sometimes when you know your opponent's throwing a big attack at, at a model you really don't want to go down yet throw it on your two threat you know she she can hit okay but realistically your other model is probably hitting harder or doing more influential things on their turn so she can take those hits for them and yeah i think that's that's really valuable so that's that's quite good to have just on herself she does have a couple of other abilities that help keep her a little bit more defensive, so she also has some okay odds to survive, depending on what's being thrown at her. She has General of the Door Melage. This character may reroll one die in its defense rolls, so three dice with a reroll is already pretty solid defensively for a two threat. I think that's that definitely already puts her on the higher end out of all of the two threats. And then she also, to top this off, has Martial Artist. When this character is defending against a physical or energy attack, targeting it from within two, so does only affect close quarters here, this character adds blanks in its defense roll to its total successes. So you do have to be a little careful with this, because while adding blanks is great, especially when you have a reroll, so now your odds are way better, um, it only being range two and you being a bodyguard means even if they're using a range two attack, you need to make sure you're in range two when you bodyguard it because you might have been a little further away than the model they were targeting or, or something like that. So you got to kind of keep that in mind when you're choosing what attacks you're going to bodyguard with her, but still really, really nice to have. Brings her to probably the bulkiest two threat in the game. Um, and yeah, that's that's a that's a really nice spot to be in. Koye is a member of two affiliations, the first of which is the A-Force. A-Force only has one leader, that is She-Hulk. And um, I really like her in She-Hulk's A-Force. I think she's a really solid model there. 
uh, on one hand, she's a two threat, which, you know, that just makes her playable pretty much just by default. But um, she's a two threat that really plays well with She-Hulk. Uh, while I don't think Black Widow, the other A-Force two threat, is bad by any means, I, I do think she kind of plays to the strengths of the affiliation a little bit more. One of the really interesting things is that She-Hulk is also a bodyguard. Um, it's called Legal Defense in her case, but it's the same. So you can kind of play this game with the two of them, where you're putting, you know, kind of smaller attacks that, that are less likely to do too much damage or hit She-Hulk too hard into She-Hulk. Uh, and then when those big ones come in, or when She-Hulk starts to get low on health, you can start throwing those onto a Koye, and then, you know, yeah, Koye probably goes down to those, but that's better than having She-Hulk go down. So really kind of interesting things you can do by having kind of two bodyguards in, in very, very different levels of kind of what attacks they like to take. Um, the other side of that too is when She-Hulk starts to get low, being able to bodyguard those small attacks onto Okoye as well, where Okoye actually has better defensive stats than She-Hulk most of the time. I mean, energy, it's a little bit more debatable, but three dice with a reroll is almost equivalent to four dice anyways. And then having the martial artist on top of that means, weirdly enough, Okoye actually blocks more on average most of the time, so that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, there, there's there's some really interesting things you can do with the two of them. So I think they're a great combination, and A-Force very much supports running them together. So I think there's a lot of value there. Other models in A-Force that kind of appreciate having a bodyguard sticking around, stuff like Scarlet Witch, who can be a little bit on the squishy side for a five threat, so being able to kind of put someone beside her who can take those hits she doesn't want to take. Really, really helpful in that regard. Um, or, you know, even stuff like Captain Captain Marvel. In the early game, you're okay with her taking a little bit of damage, but especially if you're in a force, she doesn't really need to. So being able to shove some of those attacks when she gets lower on health over to another model, really, really nice to have. So yeah, I think she's, she's a really good model for a force, for sure. Taking a look over at Wakanda and here we have a lot of leaderships to go through, so I'm going to try to go through these relatively quickly. But first of all, she is their only affiliated two threat, so as mentioned before, that kind of automatically gives her a good place there. But I do think she does benefit from a few of the leaderships, and she is a generally good model here. So let's start out with the original here. We've got Black Panther, and his leadership is spend one power to reroll one of your dice. I think she she definitely appreciates it being being a bodyguard. She she doesn't mind being able to do some extra rerolls on top of the one she already has. Counting blanks with rerolls is always really really good for that spender when you're throwing that out. If you've been able to get a little bit of power going that game, um, that that can help you get your wild triggers and stuff like that. So yeah, I think it's I I think it's definitely a solid leadership for her. I don't think you know Black Panther as a model particularly needs to have a bodyguard hanging around. But when he does get low on health, it can definitely be helpful to have one there. So, yeah, I think there, there's a lot of value to bringing her with uh, with Original Panther. Looking next at Killmonger Usurper. Um, and here is the the herb tokens that uh, that, that, that power or give you extra attack dice. Um, they're they're kind of like winking hits, but instead of rerolls, they're attack dice. Um, she's interesting here. I, I don't think she really wants the herb token all that much, but... If you're, if you're using them and some of your characters don't get to attack for whatever reason, maybe you're just doing too good on that side and you took all the models down, um, they're going to be taking damage and gaining power, so they're going to be having more impactful, powerful turns on, on later rounds, um, if, if that's happening, because they're gaining that extra power, obviously, and then you're already doing well on that side, but if your opponent has priority and, and now that your model's damaged, she's pretty solid to have there just to kind of be like, okay, well, no, he's powered up, he needs to be able to do his thing. So Okoye is going to bodyguard those hits for, for the first little bit there. So I certainly think she's she's still a solid piece there, but she doesn't really play to the leadership all that much. It's just she is, in general, a good model to have. So kind of hard to, to argue against her on pretty much any leadership here. Next up, we have King T'Challa. Uh, this is when an allied character pushes an enemy character. If they hit a terrain feature, they suffer one damage. This is probably the least meaningful for her, because she has no way of pushing characters, so I mean, that's not great. Um, this is probably one of those leaderships where I'd actually argue for another two threat, like maybe a Toad or something like that, who actually has the ability to push models. Um, so, yeah, probably not the best home for her, but she is still an affiliated too, so she still has a home. 
and you know she can take some hits off of um king t'challa because he's got a counter strike which is cool but he is a five threat that doesn't really have defensive tech so that's something that that is worth keeping in mind of, of you know you want to keep him alive if you can so she's pretty solid for that regard next we have mbaku and um he's got kind of a two-part leadership so the first part is when you would be pushed or placed by an enemy effect you can roll a die if it's crit wild or shield you're not pushed or placed uh that's only while you're contesting objective i don't think i mentioned that part i think that's actually really really solid for a quay uh as someone who runs a lot of bodyguards in my in my amenders list um one of the easiest ways to get around bodyguards is to push them or throw them away from the models that they're protecting and a lot of the times they're protecting models that are on objectives so they're also on objectives so in this case i actually think that's probably one of her favorite leaderships here just because you know it's it's less than 50 percent chance that it works but it can really throw a wrench in your opponent's plan when they need to throw away your bodyguard so they can kill you know either mbaku or one of these other models that's on like one or two health left and they just can't so now you do get to do the bodyguard um so i think it's really solid in that regard the once per turn you make an attack if you get wilds you get to change results to to hits that's just generally good for a koi it can kind of help her power generation on that builder that's only a four dicer so you know if you do get a wild in there suddenly your odds of doing damage are a little bit better uh it also means that when she does go for that spender when she does need to try and kill things that's also helping her odds out there so yeah, I mean, I don't hate that part, but really I think she gets a lot of value out of the the first part here. The other thing really nice uh, with her and, and M'Baku is she's a great bodyguard for when M'Baku has those energy attacks coming at him that he really, really hates having only two dice there. Because, I mean, especially if it's in range two, she's going to be rolling three dice with a reroll and counting blanks, so she's got much better odds of, of blocking that than he does, so... Yeah, I think uh, I think Mbaku's probably her favorite home when it comes to Wakanda. Taking a look at some of the other affiliations, I I certainly don't think she's a bad choice in most affiliations. I think just having the the kind of option for a a two point bodyguard is really really valuable. So I think she she could potentially have a home in a lot of different places depending kind of what play style you're going for. Uh, particularly for myself, I am definitely going to be trying her out in Avengers at some point she'll be taking that two threat slot in that roster because I already kind of play like a bodyguard brick style list. So adding one more to that, someone who can take maybe the, the hits that Cap doesn't want to take or Luke Cage doesn't want to take. Um, being able to, to have that extra level of flexibility and just another bodyguard model on the table, I think can be really, really obnoxious and I, I'm certainly excited to try it out myself. Um, I think in general though, she, she kind of goes best where you're going to be running models that are uh, you know, high threat, relatively squishy, or just, like, extremely important, where, you know, maybe they're not squishy, but when they do go down, it sucks, so you can have her there to just kind of be like, you know, I'm gonna take this hit, because that means my leader gets one more turn of activating, or, you know, my, my six, seven threat gets one more turn of activating, that sort of thing, so I think she's got a lot of value in a lot of places, and it's kind of hard to, to pin down, like, one specific place where it's like, she's gonna do better here than anywhere else, because I think she can do well pretty much anywhere. One thing she does struggle with a little bit, as we mentioned, is power generation. So I think places that are going to help her with that are probably some of her favorite places to be. Uh, another reason why I like the idea of her at Avengers, just bodyguards suddenly costing one under Steve is really, really nice. Um, but yeah, other places that are going to give you a little bit of extra power here and there. I could see, you know, even Emma Frost or something like that being interesting for her. So there's a few ideas there um and you know other stuff that's going to boost her defenses like uh like web warriors where she'll get an extra reroll or something like that that could be pretty solid again now you've got two rerolls counting blanks you can reroll skulls all of these are really good things so i think those are kind of going to be the things you're looking for the most with her those are the things that she kind of you know power is something she needs that she doesn't already have and defensive tech is something she already has but she could always use more of so yeah, I think those are kind of her two, her two main things. She doesn't need to be punching all the time, so I don't think she's too concerned about mobility or anything like that. She's not, you know, it's fine if she can get it. I don't think it's bad for her in any way, but she's kind of content with double moving if she has to, so I don't think that's too, too big of a deal. But yeah, I think um, there's, there's a few options for her, and it's kind of hard to pinpoint one that's better than any of the others. 
And that is pretty much all we have to say on Okoye. Coming back here, we have probably one of, if not the tankiest two threat in the game. She, she's got some really solid kind of defensive abilities going for her there. She's got a bodyguard, which is great. That gives her some really nice utility and can make her kind of be... It can give her a point up over a lot of the other two threats in a lot of different places if you have models that would really appreciate that sort of ability. So I think that's really, really good. When she does need to hit hard, she can, but she's a little dicey in that regard, and she has a hard time building up the power to do it. So, you know, stuff that can help her out with that is is definitely appreciated, but at the end of the day, she's a two threat, so you're not really building your list around trying to get a Koi to kill things. Um, but yeah, she, she's a very, very solid model. I think she, she's got great defensive abilities, and if you use her in, in a list where you, you kind of are playing to that, and she's going to really be able to get full value out of that, I think she can be a really obnoxious two threat to go against, so yeah, I think I think Akoi is a, a really, really solid piece, and one that I'm personally excited to start playing around with in my Avengers and maybe a few other places, because I think she could be a lot of fun, so yeah, I don't think I have too, too much more to say on her than that, though, so... Let me know down below, guys, where you like to run Okoye or places you think she excels in. Um, I'm, I'm really curious because I'd love to try her out in, in a few places. And if there's any combos or synergies or anything like that that I didn't think of here but you guys know about, do let me know because I'm definitely interested to hear about it. But that is going to be it for my end of this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please do drop a like down below. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Uh, we do character spotlights like these every week, so if you're into these types of videos, definitely check out some of the other ones we have or some of the other ones that are coming. We also do battle reports on Sundays, so if you like battle reports, we have those too. Um, but that is, that's going to be it for this one. So until next time, everybody, hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great day. Peace.